right, guys. Welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft, joined here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And guys, does your happy trail look more like a happy highway? Does your bush peek out over your fence? If you ever had to even think about the answer, you need the revolutionary products from Manscaped. Success is when preparation meets opportunity and Manscaped's Platinum Package will make sure you're prepared whenever opportunity strikes. Join the 6 million men worldwide who use Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off when you use code DTR. All right, Jake. Feels like we haven't been here in a while um, because we haven't had a lot of uh, Rams football in a while, but we are coming off last night, the Rams preseason football game it was a late one for us because we're not on the west coast uh it was somewhat late even for the people on the west coast at 7 p.m pacific time game where the rams took on the los angeles chargers at sofi stadium which is the home stadium for both teams and jake uh it was a battle for la even though it was preseason game uh there is a rivalry there we all know it uh it was very competitive between not only the players but of course the fan bases uh so jake it feels a little bit more sweet that the rams came away uh with that win especially because uh preseason games you never really know a lot of teams they don't play their starters the rams are one of them the rams are also one of those teams that for the most part doesn't even play their second string it's mostly just third string guys you never really know what you're going to get so it was really cool to see that it was a competitive game so jake let's just get into it i'm gonna let you give your thoughts first what did you think overall on this rams first preseason game well you know anytime you come away with a win uh it's always kind of fun i mean i know it doesn't mean anything but i was glad they won it was 29 22 so a lot of scoring and uh you know i really liked what you saw just right off the rip bryce perkins our guy uh, you know, throws two touchdowns. He runs for a touchdown, you know, 133 yards. Some people are like, he didn't throw enough. And I don't know if you know the whole Mike Vrabel thing. Apparently he made a big deal about Malik Willis not throwing, took him out of the game because of it. I don't think Sean McVay looked at it that way. Okay. Uh, when Bryce Perkins was pressured, I mean, keep in mind, it's second and third stringers the entire game. And for the most part, it's really third stringers. I mean, there weren't a lot of second stringers even in. So what he was yeah. able to do, I thought was really impressive, trying to step up in the pocket, make things happen. It wasn't always easy. And so, you know, for those plays, he broke two sacks. You know, he slipped a tackle and stiff-armed a guy and got a first down. You know, it was that type of game for Perkins. But on top of that, you, you find out, hey, this, uh, and you and I were texting each other during this, this Lance McCutcheon guy isn't half bad. Uh, the last time, you know, there was a McCutcheon on the back of the jersey, uh, it was Lawrence McCutcheon, the running back for the L.A. Rams uh, back in the day. So I know if Lance does make the team, and regardless if he does or not, we have other podcasts we'll be talking about preseason. I'm probably going to be calling him Lawrence way too many times. But, you know, he looked phenomenal. It's one of the best preseason production, you know, type of games I've seen from the position, honestly. Uh, you'd have to go back to you know, the Nelson Spruce game in, in 2016 against Dallas, as far as Rams are concerned. Um, you know, I'm sure there are others that I'm forgetting. I mean, Jacob Harris had a nice touchdown last year, but, you know, really this was just like unheard of. I mean, the, the touchdown he had, his first touchdown, he goes up and, and gets it in uh, double coverage down the left sideline, takes it to the house. And then the second one is just him using his body once again, going up and high pointing the football, securing it, another touchdown while he's being held uh, had a really nice two point conversion where, you know, he completely shook the guy at the top of the route stem and then just had him, you know, left in the dust and, and kept his feet in bounce, had the wherewithal to do that. I just think, you know, the rapport those two have uh, was special last night. Um, it was basically like, Hey Lance, go up and get it crazy enough, Alexis. And this, I think really speaks to the fact that Bryce Perkins did not have the offensive line protection that, you know, you would get if he was starting in an NFL game in the regular season. Uh, but he completed a pass to only two wide receivers. And one of them was just signed to the roster like last week. I mean, if that doesn't tell you how important Lance McCutcheon was in this game, I don't know what does. Because he was basically like, go up and get it, big guy. But on top of that, you know, Perkins was putting it where he needed to be. I thought you saw some good things out of the running backs. Again, I didn't think the offensive line was very good. I know other people are saying some conflicting things. Uh, there's been people out there that have said the, the offensive line looked great. 
I think you and I are kind of along the same page where maybe they, they flashed at times. Oh, that was a nice little, you know, block there by Bruss. But I saw more negative than positive, which I expected. They're trying out a guy in Alaric Jackson who already had experience at left tackle. They move him at the end of the game uh, to like right guard. You know what I mean? So they're just trying things out. They're trying to get different looks. Um, but I thought, you know, you saw some good uh, yard creation from Raymond Calais, who missed all of last year due to an injury. He suffered in the preseason. Um, unfortunately, we didn't see Xavier Jones because he also suffered another injury. He's on the IR. But we did see A.J. Rose. And A.J. Rose's touchdown was very interesting here because this is what I've been saying uh, about Cam Akers. He needs to get better at it's having a nose for the end zone. And when you saw him at the point of attack, immediately stopped in the backfield, at the goal line, and he spun his way into the end zone. Those are the type of plays, little things, but make a big difference. If he gets stopped there, that's zero. He doesn't. He has the second effort. You get six on that. That's what, you know, people are going to look at. Jake Funk, solid play out of the backfield uh, as a pass catcher. Uh, you know, didn't really get to run a whole lot. I don't look at the yards per carry average as anything uh, to really, you know, worry about because like I said the offense line didn't look that good Trey Regis had kind of a fun uh you know carry it was five yards but he went into this pile you didn't see him he came out the left side and you know got a five yard gain um so I mean the, the running backs were pretty solid I know you wanted to see Kyra Williams probably more than I did I and I really wanted to see him but I think they made the smart decision you know not rushing him back he'll probably play next week or the week after um but on the offense, I mean, that that's kind of what I took away. You know, you saw some good things out of the offense alignment, but for the most part, I thought there was more negatives than positives. And I thought, you know, the ability that Perkins had and McCutcheon and those guys to work around that was something that really stood out to me as far as the offense. But, um, you know, what were your thoughts on the, the defense, Alexis? Um, well, real quick, before I give the thoughts on the defense, because you made a lot of really good points and I want to I want to start off by I think we should talk about Lance McCutcheon. Yeah, because I think he was the story. And there's a lot of things that, that like we could break down from this preseason game. But I think that the first thing that we should talk about is Lance McCutcheon, because I think he was he was the reason him and Bryce Perkins was the reason that the Rams won. Oh, um, absolutely. You could argue that it was the, you know, interception at the end by by Danny Um which yes, that was the final nail in the coffin for the Chargers. But overall in the game, the reason that we won was because of the electric connection between Bryce Perkins and Lance McCutcheon that was not aided um, by the offensive line play. If anything, it's a miracle they pulled it off with the way that the offensive line was playing. So that's why it's such a big story. But, you know, Jake, I want to talk about Lance so much because I see there, especially in the past couple of weeks, there's been a lot of discourse between Rams fans about you know wide receiver three and four right um obviously when Van Jefferson is healthy he's wide receiver number three behind Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson but I've seen kind of this perpetual argument of oh is it going to be Tutu Atwell or Ben Skronik and I've been saying it's not going to be either one of them they're going to rotate into that role because they're two completely different receivers you use them for two completely different purposes so I've felt the wide receiver four is both Tutu Atwell and Ben Skoranek based on whatever play, you know, the Rams want to run at that particular time. The emergence of Lance McCutcheon, um, I think, is detrimental to Skoranek, not to Tutu Atwell, because McCutcheon and Skoranek are the same type of receiver, um, essentially. And a lot of Rams fans might say, no, 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 you know, Ben Skoranek isn't meant to be used like that. But yes, he is. And you and I talked about this in the podcast a lot. That's what Ben Skronik was used for in college. He's a red zone threat. He's, you know, a one-on-one guy winning that matchup. You know, that that's basically all, you know, I think what the Rams intended to use him for because of the injuries at receiver last season, they had Ben Skronik playing a lot of, uh, I would say out of position. And you and I talked about this before you know, kind of, he's not really a slot receiver. He's not really supposed to be used like Cooper Cup is used, you know, that type of way. And that's what the Rams were kind of sadly having to force onto him, if that makes sense. He was not being used in the way that he was familiar with. I'm not saying that in a positive or negative way. That's just the reality of the situation. So when you look at a receiver like Lance McCutcheon, he is a threat to Ben Skoranek. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? I don't know. I mean, 
I know a lot of Rams fans have beef with Ben Skoranek. I am a believer in Ben Skoranek. I do think that, like I pointed out, he was being used the wrong way, but at the end of the day, it might not matter. I mean, if Lance McCutcheon, you know, you have to give him an opportunity. Now we still have two games to go. So we're going to see a lot more of Lance McCutcheon, hopefully. Um, if he continues to play the way that he's been playing, it's a no brainer for him to make the roster. And I think he is wide receiver four. I think Tutu Atwell is also, like I said, it's, you know, the role stayed in, but I just wanted to touch on that because I've been seeing a lot of people talk about it. And what does this mean for Atwell? And what does it mean for Skronik and, you know, all the type of discourse about the receiver position. And, you know, my opinion is if anything, it's going to hurt Ben Skronik. Um, You look at the touchdowns that Lance McCutcheon had those one-on-one battles in the end zone, you know, going up and battling with the corner for that one catch and running for a touchdown. That is Ben Skoranek's role or that it was his intended role, at least in college and, you know, what the Rams originally drafted him for. So I think that we're going to see probably less of Ben Skoranek and more of Lance McCutcheon, assuming that that McCutcheon keeps it up. So I just wanted to touch on that. I didn't know if you had any thoughts on that um, at all, but I just thought it was important that we obviously talked about the implications of the emergence of Lance McCutcheon, who is a preseason hero now for our team. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how preseason can kind of change your life in a sense. I mean, even like Bryce Perkins, you know, um, when he first got the nod and he was able to, you know, really push himself on the roster last year, you know, changed his life. I mean, now all of a sudden he has a Super Bowl ring. Just think about that. If he doesn't make the team, does he have a Super Bowl ring? I don't think the Rams are able to put him back on the practice squad. They already knew that there were teams sniffing around and they wanted him. And uh, there's actually, and I have no idea where I'll find it. I'm not going to be able to find it. But there was a list of teams that Jordan Rodriguez tweeted out um, of scouts that were at the game. And that's not like uncommon. There were a few CFL scouts, but there were interesting scouts like the Bills, the Cardinals. Um, Trying to remember off the top of my head, I think the Falcons were among that. And so, you know, pretty much everybody that was listed, from what I remember, all could have had you know, like Bryce Perkins could have been on the radar, you know, Lance McCutcheon could be on the radar. I think there's an argument to be made for every team that was listed. So I thought that was really intriguing, but going to your point, you know, I don't look at, um, you know, I I don't think necessarily McCutcheon is looked at as a guy that would contribute, you know, as the, the fourth receiver or third receiver or anything like that. I think they've already like, to me, Ben Skronik is a lock. I know there are a lot of, uh, you know, obviously it's it's recency bias it's knee-jerk reaction season preseason just happened we're all excited football's back but Ben Skronik played in meaningful games last year and we can keep looking at the result of those you know all we want but at the end of the day I'm gonna look at it like this and so are the Rams this is a seventh round pick that honestly didn't even get that much playing time at Notre Dame and Northwestern so I mean it's not like this guy you know was the number one receiver so this is a seventh round pick who was thrusted into action because the injuries to Tutu Atwell, Jacob Harris, Robert Woods, Van Jefferson played with the injury last year. Uh, you know, Odell's trying to learn the offense. So he was thrusted in that role. Deshaun Jackson wanted out. You get the whole thing. Even though it didn't work out for him, he still has all of that experience built up. Experience that really is invaluable as a seventh round pick. Experience that you wouldn't expect him to have. Um, you know, guys that were in the practice squad that got called up, maybe at Landon Acres there. Landon Acres was never thrown into that role. You know, Skronik was. However, Tutu Atwell was never thrust in that role. Jacob Harris was never. And those guys were picked both ahead of Skronik. I remember you and I during the draft were surprised. They went three receivers there. Felt like the depth was pretty good, and they still drafted three receivers. So, you know, this is the guy that got the opportunities. And when you look at his body composition, what he brings to the table as a blocker and his ability on special teams, I understand. And I'm a, I'm a fan of what we saw out of Lance McCutcheon, but to just say that now Lance McCutcheon's on the roster and Ben Skronik's not after they held out Ben Skronik for a reason last night, because he's going to contribute during the season, uh, you know, I just think that we're we're jumping the gun a little bit there. I think Skronik well, yeah, is 100 not... going to be on the team. Um, that's not what you're saying. You know, I, I'm not saying right. that's that's geared at you because I know you and I agree on Skronik. When you look at the number yeah. three position, 
Uh, you know, Tutu Atwell has a different role. Ben Skoranek has a different role. Here's the thing. If you need a guy to block, are you going to pick Tutu Atwell, who's my size, or are you going to pick Ben Skoranek, who's a lot taller than both of us? Like, you know what I mean? Like a more built guy. And that's the thing. It doesn't mean that Tutu Atwell isn't good. But, I mean, think about it. Would you rather have Tyreek Hill blocking in Kansas City or would you rather have a big-bodied Travis Kelsey? I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's similar uh, because it's that different. The body compositions are entirely different. So you can't just have a guy in there at 5'8", buck sixty-five, you know, blocking an edge defender, you know. But, I mean, Skoranek could, you know. Cooper Cup can. Allen Robinson can. And so that's the thing. It provides flexibility and versatility to throw out all different looks on the offense. And that is something that is very valuable when it comes to Sean McVay. He he cares about those little things. And that's not a little thing when you get down to the wire. But here's the case I'll make for Lance McCutcheon making the roster. I think he could still make the roster and they don't have to cut anybody. If you think about it, Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, Van Jefferson, even if he's healthy, okay? You got Ben Skoranek, Tutu Atwell, Brandon Powell, Jacob Harris. That's seven, right? You'd be like, Jake, no one ever keeps eight receivers. I can't remember anybody ever keeping eight receivers. The Rams wouldn't look at it like that because Jacob Harris, to make themselves feel good, they could classify him. Doesn't mean he has to switch the position, but Jacob Harris could literally be classified as a tight end. So they keep eight receivers so they don't lose McCutcheon. But at the same time, you know, it it doesn't they don't feel bad because they got four tight ends also. So here's the thing and reason why I think they would do that, Alexis, is because this team has basically done everything to this point. Sean McVay has done everything to this point based on experience. Experience led him to this. Okay, realizing Jared Goff wasn't enough. They go out and get Stafford. Realizing Todd Gurley, the injury that he had, you know, they paid all that money to. They're not going out and getting a Saquon Barkley, a Kareem Hunt. They're not paying running backs, right? So those are two different things to take away from the experience. But here's another thing. The receiver position last year. The Rams hadn't gone through injury, you know, risks like that at the receiver spot. They drafted three guys at the position that honestly might not have even been used if Woods and Co. didn't go down. However, they were used. And Jacob Harris gets hurt, and Tutu Atwell gets hurt before they can even play the offense. So those are two receivers. Woods goes down. Van plays half the season, we find out, injured. So those are four injuries. They get Odell late in the season. He's got to learn the playbook. Deshaun Jackson wanted out, you know, so who are you down to? Cooper Cup and Ben Skoranek. And those are your, you know, healthy receivers. And yes, you had, you know, Brandon Powell, but they didn't want to give him a chance for some reason. So here's the thing. The position, they've already gone through the experience that, hey, we've had a lot of injuries here. So I think because of what they've gone through, maybe the other teams wouldn't, but I think the Rams are more likely to keep a Lance McCutcheon, keep eight receivers, And their argument would be, look at last year. We don't want to fall into anything like what happened last year because Odell is not a guarantee. And even if he was or is, because I do think he'll be back, but even if he does come back, it's going to be November. So they still have to, you know, if Van Jefferson has a setback or something, you don't have Odell until November. You got to have guys there. You have to have guys that play special teams. So that is my argument and kind of the ideology behind why I believe the Rams could keep Lance McCutcheon. Yeah, no, I, th- I agree with you. And I still think that Ben Swaronik is going to be ahead of Lance McCutcheon on the depth chart, Oh yeah, you know, all season. So, but I just wanted to point that out because I just see a lot of people talking about it. So I'm sure that they wanted to hear, you know, our opinion on it. I thought it was relevant, but at the same time, the Odell Beckham, point is interesting because you do start to look at it and it does make you like sweat a little bit and like oh my god if we have eight receivers on the roster like what Odell come back will we bring him back but I I agree with you I do think that he'll be back but it is interesting it's a very good position to be in to have a lot of intriguing uh 
prospects at wide receiver uh, because we've seen the opposite where you are running out of people and it's a nightmare. So this is really, really good. And um, yeah, I think obviously Lance McCutcheon is super promising, but that's why earlier I was like, there's two more games left. Yes. Let's see how it goes. Um, you know, if, if I think that he will definitely stay, you know, with the Rams, whether it's on the active roster or the practice squad, I think we'll make that determination. Well, the Rams well, he, will make the determination. He's but... not going to make it on the practice squad, but what I wanted to add on to that point with Odell, hear me out when I say this, everyone's worried. Oh, when Odell comes back, what happens to these guys? You're more likely to bring back McCutcheon uh, then than you are now. Because right now, it's recency bias. Right now, teams are seeing this. They're seeing what he's doing in preseason. You know that there's going to be a team that is interested in plucking him before you can add him to your practice squad. However, as the season goes on, and this guy becomes somewhat stale, if you will, doesn't mean that teams don't know about him, but he's not, you know, obviously catching two touchdowns in a preseason game. You know, that's not going to be a guy on their mind. So I guess my argument here is that I think, you know, if Odell does come back, they could be accepting of cutting a McCutcheon, you know, say week nine, week 10, week 11, and not have to worry about a team necessarily plucking him because it's been so long since he's actually played in a game at that point. You know what I mean? Because I don't think he's going to, he's probably not going to be an active receiver. This is, make no mistake about it, a guy that you are, if you keep him on the roster, He's on there for the long term, not necessarily to help you win games this year, but to make sure no one else gets him because you found somebody that you like to develop. Does that make sense? So I th I think by letting time pass, when you know if Odell comes to the Rams and he's ready to go and they have to take him off of IR or whatever, uh, you know, week eleven or so, then I think now it, you're more likely to be able to get McCutcheon. Um, back on the practice squad than you would right after preseason. Makes sense. And I agree. And while we're talking about the offense, before we move on to the defense, I think we got to talk about the offensive line. Um, not that we want to, but it's important yeah. <laughs> because it happens. Um, offensive line, Jake, uh, not a bright spot for the Rams this game. Um, definitely was kind of, uh, you know, a, a point of disappointment. Um, looking at the depth in the offensive line. And I know I've talked about this a lot for the past couple of seasons, just about how I just haven't been a fan of the Rams uh, at the Rams depth at offensive line for a really long time. And this did not make me feel any better. Um, but, you know, I think it has to be, if, if we want to look at this from a positive angle, this was second string and third string. Some of these guys, um, they were experimenting a little bit on that offensive line. And I think it's a better to see this now than late in the season, right? It's better to know where these guys can play now than late in the season. If there's an injury, Jake, I have to say Logan Bruss started off very poorly. I do think that he improved the first series from Bruss was very bad. <laughs> um, the second one wasn't great, but I think he did seem to kind of get a hold of things as the game went on. I don't know if that's because the Chargers started keep going farther on their depth chart and you just had got weaker guys coming in. I don't know what it was, but I wouldn't freak out just yet about Logan. No. Russ. The reason Jake, I wouldn't freak out is because I, I, there is an opera. There is a chance that he doesn't start right away for the Rams. Theoretically, he, they say that he's going to, but if this preseason goes really bad, uh, you know, there's been talk that maybe like we'll switch things around. Coleman Shelton will start ahead of him, who I'm kind of 50 50 on, on Coleman Shelton just in general. But, you know, there is a chance that we can give Bruss some more time to develop. So I want to freak out. It was his first NFL game. There's got to be jitters. There's got to be nervousness. And, you know, the Chargers had some pretty solid guys in there. I mean, he was he wasn't going up, you know, especially those first few drives. He was going up against some pretty talented guys that just had a high motor and, you know, it wasn't promising to see obviously because he was our first draft pick this year, uh, highest draft pick, I should say. Uh, but I do think he got better as the game went on. So I think that everyone initially was like, Oh my God, you know, this is just looking at Twitter. Bruss is getting bullied out there. You know what? This doesn't look, this is so disappointing. Yada, yada. 
whatever. Everyone needs to calm down because he got better as the game went on. And this is one of three preseason games. Right? It's three now, not four. Yeah, for some reason. <laughs> okay, just wanted to remind myself. <laughs> Make sure I got that correct. Um, AJ Curie, I thought, had some bright spots. Yeah. When he was out there. I thought that he looked really good. Um, I was really excited to see uh, Jack Snyder get in there. Um, I thought that that was exciting. I was a fan of his coming out of the draft. I was surprised he didn't get drafted, but I like to see him out there. Um, so, Jake, I think that while the offensive line obviously did get better as the game went on, it still is a little concerning, but I'm not going to freak out yet. What are your thoughts? No, I'm I'm with you. It's the first preseason game. I was just more annoyed because, like, you can't really evaluate Perkins as, like, a – you know, a pocket quarterback, not saying he would ever Mm -hmm. be that they would obviously use his legs if he ever had to start. But I just felt to me that, you know, it was like, you're trying to evaluate this guy, go through his progressions and he's trying to, it's not like this guy is just tucking and running every time. Okay. Like he was trying to be a quarterback and throw the ball and the stats show, I mean, he did that, but the stats also show he didn't do that a lot. And he only had, you know, what, 50 yards to the rest of the team. It was all McCutcheon, but can you blame him? I mean, they're literally, he did not have enough time to throw the ball. I mean, he tried. And, and I mean, there's one particular one where a guy, I think, dropped the pass. I think it was Tukoski. I could be wrong, but yeah. he steps up into the face of pressure and takes a hit. And I don't even feel like he needed to do that. Like, he totally could have thrown it away and been justified, but he tried to stay with the, the play. I think we're running into a little bit of a good problem to have type deal where how much longer, and I understand the Rams love him, but how much longer do you trot Wolford out there? You know, the way Perkins is playing with his ability, it's almost like, and you know, I like Wolford. So it hurts me to say this, but I was actually just having this discussion with my father earlier today. And it's like Wolford and Perkins have the similar abilities. Just Perkins has better speed. And, you know, the arm strength is pretty much the same. I mean, maybe Wolford throws a more tighter spiral. Maybe he throws a more, uh, you know, velocity-ridden ball. But Perkins, I think, can make throws. Uh, Every throw on the field, not like Stafford. But, I mean, this guy's developing. And I saw a better quarterback than I saw last year. And that's what you want to see. In preseason, did he get better? And so, you know, I look at the offensive line and I think, Look, you know, Alaric Jackson, when he was at left tackle, you could have argued, I mean, he had one bad snap. But aside from that, he looked like an NFL starter. He looked like a guy that was sticking out like a sore thumb in a good way. Clearly looked like the best of the bunch. Then you look at Bruss, you know, like, okay, he's a rookie. We got to calm down. I think this is a good game for him to have because I think fans can kind of temper their expectations now. Let Coleman Shelton take the job because it looks like he's going to win this job. He didn't play. That's a pretty clear sign he's going to win. Um, but, you know, just let let him develop because he was drafted for the long term, not immediately. And the Rams do go with the slow playing, you know, of the the development, right? They took forever to give, you know, guys like Nopum an opportunity. I mean, obviously you have Whitworth, so I, you know, rush it. But that's what they do. So I actually kind of like that. Cologne seeing him at center was intriguing because if he does get better there, that is now having three centers on the roster and you don't have to keep three centers, you know, because you could keep him and he's the backup. And so, you know, you could make the argument, like if you don't want to move Coleman Shelton from right guard, say he fits in there well and Brian Allen goes down. Now you could put Cologne in there, you know, and that's the thing. That's good depth to have. That's good versatility to have. I uh, saw Ankrum, you know, he was playing guard. He played left tackle. I like the different looks they were getting. They got better as the the game went on. They ran the ball 35 times, though, for 109 yards. That's 3.1 yards per carry. They had two touchdowns, but I really think the running backs had to do more, and they did more with less. And so I'm hoping in the next game you see, you know, better blocking, uh, you know, in the run game, especially more protection for Perkins. Was a little surprised to not see Perez, but I, you know, I said this yesterday on the live stream. When it comes to Perkins, I think the Rams are literally, they're not looking at this as, Perkins is trying to make the roster. I think Perkins is on the roster. I don't know how you cut him at this point, yeah. but I will say this. The reason Perkins got those snaps, I think is less having to do with him being on the bubble and more saying, you know what? 
he is not going to play at any point during the regular season unless we have a catastrophic injury ridden meltdown. So with that said, this is his opportunity. And when you look at Perkins and you know, you make this, you know, this decision to go out and get this UDFA, he signs with you. Uh, we already know Kevin O'Connell, uh, you know, he said Kevin O'Connell liked this guy. So he's the one that got, you know, he really, he talked to Kevin O'Connell before he became a Ram. So th- the Vikings, I think, would be the number one team and they would get him. But Perkins is 25 years old. He'll, he'll be 26 in uh, December. And so, you know, when I look at what he brings to the table, I'm thinking Wolford's on a one-year deal. Just see what you have in this guy. But also, more than that, let this guy play. Because he's not going to get this opportunity unless he goes to the USFL. And maybe someday, I'm not saying he will, so don't kill me, Rams fans. But maybe someday, if push came to shove and Stafford retired early, the Rams would actually give Perkins a shot to run as the quarterback for the Rams. Or at least compete for the starting quarterback job. It's not outlandish. It's not crazy. He's got everything you want in a a mobile modern day quarterback. You want to see the arm strength there. Obviously you want to see that development, but again, it's too hard to evaluate him when he doesn't have the time to step into most of his throws and he's constantly running for his life. So I just think that, you know, kind of going back to the offensive line, you want to see that improvement next week. So you can see more Perkins And again, kind of going back to Perkins, that's why you didn't see Perez. I don't think it's Perkins being on the bubble. I think the Rams really like Perkins more than most fans actually really realize. Guys, once again, just want to point out that you can get 20% off and free shipping with code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. There are so few perfect summer days. Don't let hot, sweaty balls ruin them. Stay fresh, clean, and smelling good with Manscaped. I agree. I think this is almost a, the Rams' way of them wanting to maybe see if he could be quarterback number two. I know that sounds crazy, but I think that the Rams are like, you know, we'll put him out there. We'll see what he does. Uh, like you said, Wolford's on a one-year deal. Let's see, you know, they could let Bryce Perkins basically play all of next game and the last game and just see what happens. And I'm really hoping for Bryce Perkins sake and for the viewers sake, us watching it, that the second string offensive line and maybe some of the starters play like one or two drives if we just to get some reps in before the season comes so we can see what Bryce Perkins is like with a solid offensive line. I really want to see it. And this would be our only chance. Now, is it worth maybe getting an injury? Probably not. But there is that little part of me that's like, man, I just hope that we can see a drive, you know, Bryce Perkins with a good offensive line and just see what happens. Um, but that's probably not going to happen. Knowing the Alternate Rams. reality, uh, like multiverse. And, I, I would like to see Bryce Perkins right. with all of the starters. Like, how good would he be if he had Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson? Like, that's what I need to know. We'll see. We hope that doesn't happen. No, I, I know. I mean, alternate reality. I'd love no, to know. know. Like, right. is he legit? Do you continue on with this development? We'll never know. But well, maybe we will know. But I don't know if I want to know. Well, he definitely played well. Like I said, him and McCutcheon, I think, were the bright spots for this team during the game last night. But let's talk about the yes. defense. Uh, Jake, the defense, I thought, and I kind of made a joke about it. You and I were texting. Yes. And I was like, it's kind of boring. Um, but it's better that it's boring than it is like, oh my God, nobody's doing anything. But for the majority, I'd say the first three quarters of the game, it was like just solid. Like it was like just watching like a nice, easy, it was like easy listening music, <laughs> but in football, like it was just like, we Except were watching we it with the charger and, speed. <laughs> right. We, oh my gosh. Yeah. Jake and I had to watch the chargers feed for some ungodly reason. And no big deal. Like, Whitworth is on the other side. <laughs> Our friend Mina Kimes is on the other. Yeah, I know. We, we get to watch Dan Fouts. Like, you know, thanks. the thing about that chargers feed is they so clearly so many times didn't know that they were like, had a hot mic and they were like sitting there, the announcers and they were like openly talking. Like they didn't know the mic was on. And I was just waiting for a nightmare. Oh to happen. yeah. Like they were just like, remember when the injury happened? Yeah, and they're like, Brown? I think that's ninety five. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the injury. No, they're like, I think no, that's yeah, ninety five. Not... And the guy's like, yeah, 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 that looked not good. And he's like, yeah. And then they're like, don't yeah. show it. No, I don't want you to show. It. Like yelling yeah. at the like producers. It was just a nightmare. Uh. Like, anyways, aside from that point, um, the the defense, yeah, boring in a good way. 
solid. Everybody did their job. Uh, Jake, I thought Daniel Hardy was really impressive. I think um, the numbers were like he came away three or four tackles. He was always by the ball. I thought he did a good job. Um, Daniel Isom, St. Louis kid out of University City in St. Louis, came out, got the game-winning interception. That was bizarre. Um, that, that was really fun to that see. That was bizarre. Yeah. I haven't seen anything like that yeah. since uh, Dre Bly back in like 2001 on Monday Night Football. Just took it. You remember the running back Garrison Hurst for the 49ers? He just took it out of his hand and ran the other way. I have never seen anything yeah. like that. And then last night we see the most bizarre interception. I know. Well, it was good. You know, you saw some guys really step up and ugh, someone's slipping my mind. There was another. Oh, Bobby Brown. So, Jake, the Bobby Brown situation. Yeah, that was. Bobby Brown is is technically well he is suspended but it doesn't count in the preseason which is why you know I hate to use this example you see Deshaun Watson playing right now yeah. you see Bobby Brown playing right now because if you're suspended you can still play in the preseason so Bobby Brown is suspended the first six games of the season for using PEDs he played really well last night Jake um you know I thought he went out there and Bobby Brown looked really really good and it was kind of a bummer to know that we're not going to be able to see him um, behind Aaron Donald and Greg Gaines for the first six games of the season. He did have an injury, as Jake and I referenced with the debacle with the Chargers broadcast um, earlier. Oh, man. Uh, Bobby, Bobby Brown got an ankle injury. Jake, it sounds like it might. So it's an interesting situation because he's not coming back until six games anyways. And they, they sounded like so, they felt good about it. Like it looked worse right, than it like, actually was. Right, like he'll be back. He'll still be back when they expected him to be back because of the suspension. Like the injury is going to last him, right? The, supposedly, and that could change. But as of right now, they're thinking he'll be back week seven as planned. But I did think that Bobby Brown looked really good. Um, yeah, I, I thought he looked really I, good too. I think it was telling that Marquise Copeland didn't play at all. So I think he's got that fourth spot locked up. Yeah, he didn't play. Um, you're right. I wanted to touch on the cornerbacks because I really wanted to see more of Darion Kendrick and Kobe Durant. Darion Kendrick, Kendrick looked yes. very good. He almost had a pick um, six when he was out there. He did almost have a pick six. Uh, Durant, I thought looked okay. He he had a few plays that were like blown coverage. Uh, wasn't able to tackle a guy, which were some of the concerns that Rams fans had, but I did think that he played like solid. I didn't think it was like, you know, necessary to say that he had a bad yeah, game or whatever, but Darion Kendrick totally stood out. I mean, I thought, and it makes sense why they didn't let him play more than they did. I thought Grant Haley, injury, but I would have liked to Grant see Grant Haley more. had one of the craziest tackles good. I've seen on a third down. Like to, to not, the guy was right there. Which one? Uh, it was to the um the left sideline, and it was like so where he it was like a tight end, and he, he like somebody? threw the guy. And it, yeah, yeah, they ended okay. up getting the yeah. first down on the fourth down conversion right after. But like that was a huge mm -hmm. tackle. Yeah, well, I'm just excited. You know, I think that that court. So you've obviously got Jalen Ramsey and Troy Hill. But I kind of oh you know who else looked really good is Robert Rochelle. Yes, although he Rochelle had he had a lapse good. in coverage that people were pinning on Burgess. What I'll say is this: he jumped underneath. We don't know exactly what the play was, but it looked to me, based on the way Burgess reacted, is that he jumped underneath. He's supposed to trail the wide receiver to the top near the end zone. And so Burgess saw he wasn't there. So Burgess left his post and tried to stop the play. It was too late. So then, of course, people see number 26, yeah. and they're like, oh, Burgess got burned. It was like, no, no, no. 31 dives down and bites on the route, the underneath route, and leaves the route up top wide open. So that was really what happened there. I noticed that uh, on the telecast. But I got to give a shout-out. Obviously, our guy Daniel Hardy played his ass off. Um you know, shout out to Ernest Brown, the fourth, getting a sack. That that was huge for him. Hopefully his confidence is boosted. We'll see if he'll make the roster or not. Uh, but Benton Whitley, the kid from Holy Cross, man, every single play he was in there, he he got some good pressure on the outside, number 51. Um, you know, I, I really liked the game he played. Uh, he had a couple of almost sacks. 
uh, he had one, and, and Daniel Hardy definitely had one where, you know, right before he goes down, guy just launches it. Um, you know, I, I think those two really worked well together. Uh, the Thomases look good, too. Braden Thomas and Cure Thomas kept meeting in the backfield. Uh, Cure Thomas looked good. Sean McVay mentioned him during, uh, you know, the Rams. I, I saw the highlight of it. I didn't actually watch the Rams feed as we were talking about. Uh, but during the Rams feed, he made mention that Cure Thomas has had a nice uh, camp. Um, we did see Russ East in there. Really bizarre seeing him wearing 43, but not as bizarre yeah. as seeing J. Ron McVay wearing number 40, who was worn by, yeah. uh, well, two players, but the one that is very well etched in Rams history is uh, Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch. And basically, we're, we're going to talk about this really quickly because I, I had a bone to pick with the Rams about this. So Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch never had his number retired. Okay, this guy is incredibly uh, important to the history of the Rams. One of the best re receiving seasons ever. Helped win the 51 championship in L.A. And went on to be the GM that drafted Roman Gabriel, Merlin Olsen, and Deacon Jones as you know a bunch of other guys. So clearly this guy was huge. And his number was never retired, right? They only retired eight numbers. His number was never retired. But they took it out of circulation. And Von Miller asked the estate of Elroy Crazy Likes Hirsch if he could wear that number. They said yes. He wins a Super Bowl. Von Miller leaves. Why is 40 being worn in preseason by some rando? I'm not trying to hate on J. Ron McVay. But do you see how that was kind of unfair? Yeah, no, I agree. And I do think, you know, the Rams historically um, compared to other teams, and I know other people share my sentiment, they don't particularly do that well with retired nope. numbers. There's Corey a Holtz lot of numbers. That there. I mean, our guy's retired. wearing it. Jamal Pettigrew, but. Yeah. But, you know, Kurt, Kurt Warner, Warner yeah. um, you know, Todd. there's a lot of Jim Everett's number. Norm Van you know, Brocklin and through. Jim Everett both wore 11. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, you know, the, some franchises are different than others. You know, some retire every number and some, I guess, don't retire any. I think the Rams lean more towards that side of the spectrum. Uh, it is a little frustrating. And I think the 40 thing is especially frustrating because that was such a specific thing to Von Miller where Von went and asked. That was pretty family, awesome. He knew his history, state. like his Rams history. So yeah, I was like and, hyped that he did that. And I was like, you know what? Because he did that. I like him in 40 and now. Yeah, it's, you know, I, Ugh. I would, the Rams also, as you and I know, we've touched on this they podcast also. Did you notice who was numbers. wearing 16 aside from Bryce? Brick? The punter. Yeah. <laughs> Dicker. Dicker. Who was who great by the way. Um, the Rams. Okay. They're just a little, you, they're just petty <laughs> with this. Like we love them, but like they are, they go Jared Goff, they had the thing, then they they made Bryce Perkins be number sixteen, which he said so, on our show. So it's not like we're making that up. Yeah, he said that on our show. That's confirmed. We saw John Wolford go out there in thirteen. I don't know if there, that Rams Jake are behind Gervasi's that or not. Wearing Stephen Jackson's um, number. Well, yeah, but I just think that you know I don't know if the Rams were like we're going to make this guy wear forty, you know, because Vaughn left and we're going to replace it like they did with the number sixteen. I don't think that's the case. I think it's just kind of like a lapse in judgment. That's what I, I would, would say. say. Like the Rams probably should just be like, oh, we should make that number unofficially retired again. And they're and just I mean, not. That's how that's, I feel. I don't think, you know, and someone brought this up the other day in the tweet that I had, uh, someone who was a Broncos fan said, Philip Lindsay um, asked to have 30, which 30 was uh, Terrell Davis's number, right? So, the whole point was that they took it out of circulation and then Philip Lindsay asked to wear it. And then it's like, Oh yeah, yeah, you can wear that or whatever. It might not have been Terrell Davis. Maybe I'm wrong, but regardless, it was a player that was well-regarded among the Broncos organization. And essentially once Philip Lindsay was gone, they just gave it to Justin Simmons or, or whoever they gave it to, you know, one of the, so it's like, I asked you for this number. Okay. I asked you, you allowed me, now the team has it just in circulation again. I don't, I don't like that. Like if, yeah, I, I, just, I don't either, I don't but it's just, it's one of those things where, like I said, I think there's a lot of numbers with the Rams that should be retired that aren't. 
Yeah. Um, so it just is what it is. You know, it's let's whatever, be honest. But, they're not retiring a number uh, uh, besides probably Donald's. I think Donald's and maybe cups someday, but definitely Donald's. Yeah. Other than Donald, no one is. Allowed. Although if Stafford re- if, rips now, off four Super the- Bowls, how do you, how do you argue against that? I mean, this isn't the Golden State Warriors where they retired Kevin. Durant. Wait, they retired Kevin Durant. <laughs> they number? retired. Yeah, what? Golden State retired Durant's number. For what? Yeah. Do you not remember that the day after he like left, they announced thirty five was retired. They for they Golden did State. not. Yes, Google it real quick and see if they reversed it. I don't I don't think they did because I just remember seeing that and I was like, are you serious? He like I don't know. I get the Kevin. Okay, they, really good. they didn't. I'm getting. He says they should. No, they definitely announced that they were retired. I just looked it up. It says Kevin Durant says Warriors should retire his number. April 1st, 2022. No, but I, but I thought. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that we're not at that level. I could have sworn. I mean, I brought this up yesterday on my show. I was like, you know, as much as I love my Yankees, the Yankees retire a ton of numbers. I mean, they've retired so many numbers. Uh, that, you know, it, it, everybody has to wear it in the 90s and the 80s and stuff. But, you know, with football, I, I understand it's hard. But, like, you know, you already have, you know, repeat numbers. <laughs> like, there's repeat numbers all over preseason and everything. Um, to only have eight retired is kind of weird. And especially, not the eight that they retired. It's not to say that they aren't deserving. But, yeah, I just, I had an issue with it. But as far as the, the defense goes, I mean... You know, I thought you saw some good things out of the pass rush. Everybody, you know, in the pass rush. Um, the secondary could have been better, but they're playing soft zone. They're playing real soft coverage. You could tell. Um, Jay Cummel, shout out to him. Ten tackles. Guy shows ability to run sideline to sideline. The athleticism shows up on film. And uh, I liked how, you know, oftentimes guys are trying to make a play. So they go, they wrap around, and they try to punch the ball out, right? Well, with Jake Hummel, he actually goes by he goes by the the belt. So he he grabs hold and then punches the ball out. And so uh he didn't punch it out last night, but I just like how he, you know, I, I like his effort essentially. Uh and you just sent me a statement on Kevin Durant. Three years ago we were thrilled with the arrival. Uh okay. Carried himself with class, his commitment. No player will ever wear number 35 for the Warriors again. See? So I'm not crazy. So they, they didn't said retire it. it, but they took it out of circulation, which is like the same thing as what Elroy Curry's like Hurst right. did. That's insane. That's insane. I know. That's what I was saying. Like, I just, I wanted to make sure I was losing Okay, my you're mind. not. I, like, I didn't even know that. They definitely said that. That's, No, wow. I, yeah. Um, Not to... <laughs> turn this into us throwing shade at Kevin Durant. That's That's more a me throwing shade to the He's he's a professional athlete Um, who openly has a burner account. He's fair game at that point. Um, But yeah, so so what are your thoughts? I want to get your thoughts on Jake Hummel, uh, number 59, because Christian Roseboom appears to have locked up a job. He didn't play last night, and he's mm -hmm. fully healthy. So what were your thoughts on Hummel? Because I thought he really stood out and looked really everything we've been saying in the off season about why I was so excited for him and everything. I think he looked the part. What about you? I thought he looked good. I was impressed. Like I said, a lot of these guys, you know, they weren't super flashy, but they did their job. And that's almost kind of like what you expect out of preseason, right? You just want to see who can hang in there, who can get the job done. And I thought that, that's what he did. I thought a lot of them did that. Um, yeah, I think it's interesting. I definitely think it's promising for the Rams. I think that we do have like, I know I understand why a lot of Rams fans get worried and there's people that are like, Oh, we should go out and trade for, you know, a proven edge, right. Or free agent edge rusher or whatever, but all the time, but we do have a lot of guys that are promising Garrett didn't even play inside linebacker edge. Yeah, so, you know, I get that it's a little scary. It's not quote-unquote proven talent, right? It's not guys that have been playing in the league for a while, bless you, and who we know what they can do. So I understand why fans feel that way. But the good, it, it is good news that we have a lot of these guys that are going to be able to show what they can do. So I wouldn't worry. I think our defense it, is going to be really, really solid. And, guys, this was a preseason game. I'm guilty of it, too. You know, you watch things 
melt down and you're like, oh my God. It was like when we watched the offensive line the first quarter. I was like, this is I was I was terrible. worried. But for then you, you have to remind yourself you love the offensive line. <laughs> I'm very big in the offensive line. Everybody knows that. I'm like I'm always screaming throughout the season, like, why do we not have more offensive line depth? I am. I just want I want enough. there to be like I want I want us to be able to replace our starting offensive line with like an equally good offensive line. Like that's just, if I had it my way, it's not realistic, but that's what I think we should strive for. But we have to just tell ourselves like, this is preseason and it's tough because we're not like watching all the practices, right? We don't get to see what the first string, second string guys are doing, but we just have to like, we know that they're doing a better job than what we saw last night. That's what we have to like, remind ourselves but overall i think we should be very happy guys with the rams first preseason game that went really well not only did we win we beat a quote-unquote rival because they're in la i know that there's like the battle of la or whatever so we beat them um we did it in sofi stadium it's so weird Uh, playing it was great like when you're gonna play them in the regular season i i always found that really bizarre and isn't it crazy that we're playing them in the regular season and we're yeah, like so it's team? literally the same scenario except that there's going to be starters. Okay, here's something, and Jake, I'm saying this because I need people to tweet me this if they also agree. Did the pants last night not look like highlighter them. yellow? I did not. I normally and normally we're flipped on this, right? Is it you or someone else who's always like they look like highlighter, and I'm like, no, 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 they look like yellow i think it's is it you else. or is it I, i've really it always liked else. their uniforms okay, well, but i i gotta say I, we didn't see on the rams feed i looked at the rams feed highlights okay the color grading was mm-hmm. different it's like they use their own color grading on the Chargers. it adds feed. up <laughs> well anyone who watched the chargers feed because i was bizarre. watching it and the pants looked like such a different color and i was like trying to figure out like is it the lighting like i couldn't even tell the were they wearing white or bone I, uh, jerseys no it was the white okay because at points it looked like they were wearing bone and i was so confused i don't understand mate hopefully i think it was just the feet but i was like looking at the pants and i like almost yeah i look mean at them. this i was like I'll i don't send it to you like this is what it's supposed to look like and i think the feed made it look weird but I just sent it to you. Like, that is vibrant. It looks good. Like, I don't know if it sent it to you already. But you, you, uh, you'll you see it. See, yeah, those pants still look a little highlighter. It's me. Because I normally you, don't yeah, think it's that. Probably you. But this still looks, you can tell they're wearing white yeah, jerseys. Yeah, they're beautiful. That honest, that uniform combo is maybe my favorite in the league now. And I love the blue and yellow, but... The white looks amazing. I can only imagine how good the yellow is going to look next year, but we'll see um, if they do yellow, if they do black. I just think too many teams did black that they'll probably just go with yellow because who else is going to have a yellow top? You'd be the only team, essentially. So, Yeah, we talked about this in great length the last episode, but I think it'll be yellow. But, guys, I think that's going to do it for us. I mean, this was only the first preseason game out of three, Jake. So we got, think of it this way, two more games to go, guys, and then it's regular season. The Rams kick off the regular season against the Bills in Los Angeles, Thursday, September 8th. It's going to be amazing. And Can't I wait, guess Jake. there's going to be a cut day. Um, I'm going to look this up real quick. The 16th. So the, uh, yeah, so two, two days, days cut from 90 to 85. The next Tuesday, August 23rd, cut from 85 to 80. And then the brutal, 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 bloody Tuesday, August 30th, the cut from 80 to 53. Honestly, my thoughts on the gradual cuts, I think they're incredibly stupid. (laughs) Because if you think about it, if you are in, say, the third preseason game, why wouldn't you have 90 men so you could play the guys who have no chance of making the roster and give them some playing time? Now it's like the guys who have no chance of making the roster aren't going to get that time. I, I think that just hurts, uh, you know, the competition. It, it hurts the, you know, those, those guys, but I mean, it's not the first time. I mean, I, I'm still waiting on that. What? 55 man roster. What was that supposed to be? 2022. Like, I mean, what, where's that? You know, it's still 53. They still have what? 47 players that you can dress for the game. I don't get most of the stuff that they have. I'm sorry. I'm going on a rambling tangent, but you get my point. 
Uh, I just think the gradual cutting yeah. is incredibly stupid. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely we'll have an update after that. You know, when we talk about in the next episode about the cuts, what it means, all that. Uh, guys, almost there, inching closer. This is now the nitty gritty of just you know securing what the final roster is going to be. Exciting! I can't wait. Um, but guys, as always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. You can follow us on social media at Downtown Rams. Instagram is at the Downtown Rams. Please make sure you go follow our new Instagram. Our current page is still hacked. I don't think we're going to get it back at no. this point. So please follow the Downtown Rams. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft. You can follow Jake at JK Bogan. Guys, we'll be back next week covering the next preseason game. But until then, stay safe, take care, and go Rams. And guys, once again, just want to point out that you can get 20% off and free shipping with code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. There are so few perfect summer days. Don't let hot, sweaty balls ruin them. Stay fresh, clean, and smelling good with Manscaped.